If you're watching TRTS Clips, a clip-sized content playlist that encloses experiences and stories of some of the most amazing intellectually sound people from different walks of life, you enjoy this particular clip and don't forget to check out the entire playlist. If you like it, please support us by sharing it. Now, without further ado, the guest is all yours. See, first and foremost in anything is the self-narrative. Okay. What do we tell ourselves, right? If we keep telling ourselves that this dynamism is a burden, then it will be a burden. Exactly. If we tell ourselves that this dynamism is an opportunity, it will be an opportunity. So I will tell you, this is a huge moment in my own thought process, which happened around 2011. When I actually, after many years of working in India, I actually went to live and work in Australia, right? So what happened there was I had the ability to compare and contrast how things work in India versus how they work in Australia, Hmm. right? And I I will spare you the detail, but I'll come to the summary of my conclusion. And it took me many, many months to completely fathom them this thing okay i feel that india is the only country of its kind in the following dimension first and foremost is the size of our population Hmm. right at 1.3 or 1.4 billion people there are only two countries of this size one is china one is india exactly but i'll continue with my parameters and you will realize that why india is the only one at the end of it So first and foremost, like I said, is the size of our population. So which means that whatever we have to put in terms of systems, they have to cater to an extremely large, unprecedented scale, right? Second is what I call the heterogeneity of our population. These are not 1.3 or 1.4 billion people all the same or all almost the same. They are extremely... Extremely diverse, extremely variant. So whether it is socioeconomic or it is religious beliefs or it is even the age demographic or it is other aspects in which one can classify a large group. So it is very heterogeneous. And the point of heterogeneity actually occurred to me when I was in Australia and living in Sydney. There actually, you know, 95% plus of the population of the whole country actually lives in six or seven urbanized cities. Okay. So when you have a much more homogenized population, It is much easier to design systems. Exactly. But in India, for example, even if you have to think about road, how to make make a proper road. Now, you have to cater to people who will be walking, people who are using animal-driven transportation, people who are using self-powered cycles, people who are using motorized two-wheelers and then four-wheelers and four-wheelers of all size and then trucks and then... So this heterogeneity is not an easy thing to solve. So we spoke about the size of the population, we spoke about the heterogeneity of the population, then we have to talk about, you know, the democratic decision-making. This is where India and China differ. Okay. Right. In India, everything has to be decided based on consensus. In China, exactly. you don't take consensus. You just exactly. so then that leads to violation of human rights and violation of the dignity of all life. Right. Yeah. So in India, we would have seen so many times that there is a grave of some holy man, and then there's a main road built all around it. Yeah. Right. Or there's a small temple, and then there's a road built around it. Or yeah. there's a tree, and there's a road built around it. Right. Yeah. That I think we can look at as a fodder of jokes or we can look at that that is the symbol that we want to take everybody along. Mm. So we have to do democratic decision making. And then finally, and unfortunately, you know, there is obviously deep rooted corruption in our systems. Of course, obviously it is being cleaned out, but there is deep rooted corruption in our system. So which means that, you know, there is all the capital that starts at the top of the funnel does not necessarily reach the bottom of the funnel in that sense. So I would summarize all of these four factors of the size of the population, the heterogeneity of the population, the democratic decision making and the inherent corruption, which is obviously hopefully going away bit by bit. But all these four put together makes it an extremely unprecedented situation. So I'd say that my appeal to people in positions of, you know, aspiration or decision making is that let us look at it as an opportunity, right? Let us first acknowledge that this is an unprecedented problem, right? Our administrators, the people in IAS, IPS and such positions or IFS or people running, uh, you know, other uh, armed forces and so on and so forth, they are not incapable people. They are extremely capable people. But let us also understand that the problems that they're solving for are extremely unique problems. There are no models that we can copy, right? Mm -hmm. It may be easy to say that let us take Hyderabad and make it like Sydney, but Hyderabad is not like Sydney, Yeah. right? Uh, The whole country's population there is uh, 22 million and Hyderabad's population itself might be 8 or 10 million. Exactly. So 
So we have to, I go back to the first thing I mentioned is that we have to go back to what is the self-narrative. If we tell ourselves that it is an extremely large, extremely different kind of a problem, then we will find extremely different kind of solutions and we will spend less time in lamenting and moaning about how things don't work and more time in finding out how can I be a part of the solution. You know, one very simple mental model which has helped me convert myself from a person who was frustrated about everything about the system that doesn't work to a person who's much more understanding is very simple that why don't I ask myself that okay you are so smart what is your solution wow. whatever the problem right if the problem is traffic if the problem is anything else distribution if the problem is uh, you know inadequate social structure uh, support structure whatever so let us ask our own selves that what is your solution and if i don't have a better solution then do i have the right to complain about the solution which already exists right wow. because i feel that we don't want to become a nation of the ungrateful exactly i think we should become a nation of the grateful a grateful doesn't mean comp- complacent that's not what i mean obviously there is a lot of stuff to be done but if we are grateful for what we have then we build on that platform because then we also energize ourselves if we are not grateful for what we have then we are not standing on any platform then we're standing on uh, quicksand and we just keep going down and down and then one day you find yourself wanting to just go on site and leave india and who does that help that doesn't help the country yeah. Yeah. right that doesn't help the place where we grew so that i think is not the right attitude i think the right attitude is let's understand deeply and let's be a part of the solution by being grateful for what already exists